Hey, we've come to verses 13 to 15 in Exodus chapter 3. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial name to all generations. So Moses is anticipating some possible rejection, and we know why. He's already experienced some rejection among his people. And he asks God, you know, well, hey, this will be a real winter if you could... If I get to tell your name, that will, that will be very interesting to them. That will be quite persuasive. And the answer comes back, I am who I am. That might sound kind of mysterious or sideways to you or me, but, but God is the self-existent one. And this is playing off the Hebrew word for being or existence. I am who I am. That is God. God says, this is my name. This is just what you can call me. I am that I am. And so... Because God is the self-existent one, he's always existed. He will never cease to exist. He has being, has always had being. Yeah, and so that is, that is something kind of new. You didn't really quite see it that way in Genesis, and now we're getting more revelation. The Bible includes a kind of a progression of revelation as you go through from the beginning to the end. Now, according to Sarna in the JPS commentary, uh, his name can also be translated, he who causes to be. And that's true, you know, God, when God speaks, you know, the universe pops into existence. Whatever God wants to make, he, when he speaks, he causes it to be. If God is willing to transform your heart and he speaks it, it will be. That's the way God is. God alone can bring that which does not exist and bring it into existing. Whenever Moses speaks directly to God, he always uses this called the tetragrammaton, those four letters, basically Y-H-W-H or y -V -Y -H -W -H. VH, Yahweh or Yahweh, that is the covenant name. And what's interesting too is that out of respect in the Bible, we see a lot of times when, when people come to that, a lot of Hebrew people, when they come to those four letters, Y-H-W-H, then instead of speaking it out of reverence and holy, the holy reverence for God, they will say Adonai there, meaning Lord in Hebrew, or in the New Testament, Kyrios means Lord. And so they'll replace that. Or in some writings in English today, you'll be seeing when they come to the word God, they'll write G and then an underscore with a blank space and then D. They leave out the O because that's their way of, of using English, putting English so that we're giving respect to God's name. Now, we're in a very anti-respect uh, culture today, aren't we? And so uh, that this, this seems alien to us. But, but Moses is going to treat God's name with respect all the, all the way through there. And in the Ten Commandments, I don't want to get ahead of the game here, but as we get into the Ten Commandments, it's very important to treat God's name with appropriate respect. Not because, you know, like God needs it, but because it's important for us. We need it. We need those kind of titles and respect things to help us think straight and not lose our way and have the wrong line of thinking with God. So remember, he's the potter, we're the clay, he's the creator, we're the created. It's just wise to keep those distinctions clear in our mind. Now, the revelation of the divine name right here, this kind of marks a new stage in the history of Revelation. And so from here on out, we're going to have God's, God's uh, actual, this name that he uses. So that's an important step along the way. God is not merely all-powerful, but he's, he's personal. And he communicates in a very personal way. And so he's actually giving us his actual name. This holy, self-existent being is communicating his name to mere creatures, us. And so as we go on, we're going to find out also that God's name says a lot about his character. And there's some more for that for us in the book of Exodus. But today we'll leave it there. You have a wonderful day serving the God of heaven, the God who can create something out of nothing. 